A mystery is unfolding in Westerly. A strange circular object has been discovered under the water at East Beach, and no one has any idea what it is. The ability for, for an object to fly not only in our atmosphere, low and high altitudes, but also potentially in a vacuum environment like space and even underwater. Behind me is Long Island Sound, which is fed in by the Atlantic Ocean. Now, throughout history, we've seen many documentations and reports about UFOs over this particular coast and many others. But what about USOs? With their transmedium capabilities, with their supercavitation technology, uh, this is a very interesting subject that doesn't get enough light shed on it. Now, is that because we just don't have the technology at bay and it's not us? Is this because possibly we just don't have enough information about this particular phenomenon? I believe that there are many documents that are being suppressed, especially in the way of USOs. And for this reason, with underground bases as possibly their stopping point, there may be some logic to this decision. My name is Preston Dennett. I'm a UFO researcher. I've been studying this subject for about 35 years written almost 30 books and more than 100 articles on this subject. And one area I have focused a lot of my research on is USOs, Unidentified Submersible Objects. You could also call these transmedium craft, meaning they can travel through both the air and the water, different mediums. Officially, the military does not have any transmedium craft. Though there are documents dating to the 1950s and 60s that show that the US military was interested in developing what they would call a flying submarine, a craft that can move in and out of the water. But officially, we don't have anything like this. Now, the ETs do. And in fact, there are a number of reports of objects that can fly through the air, go into the water, and come out of it. They can travel through both the air and the water with ease. These are transmedium objects, USOs. But what's interesting about USOs and transmedium objects is there's not a lot of coverage on this subject. And I'm not really sure why. Uh, this particular area of ufology has not gotten a lot of attention. Very few researchers have looked into it, which is strange because I got cases of USOs, objects coming into the water and going out of the water very early on in my research. I've written about many such cases. In fact, I do have a book that focuses solely on these type of incidents. Yet we don't get a lot of news coverage about this and I think there are probably a number of reasons for that. Uh, one is that these reports are far more rare than regular UFO sightings. I mean compared to UFO encounters of which there are many hundreds of thousands incidents of USOs and transmedium vehicles are relatively rare. I think that's one reason. Another is because they are so unusual that perhaps people have been reluctant to speak about them. For whatever reason, USO accounts, accounts of transmedium vehicles, have not gotten their fair share of attention, at least not until recently. Now, people are beginning to wake up there's a lot more attention being paid towards the USO phenomena, which I'm happy to see because these cases are unusual. And I think they have a lot to say about UFOs and their capabilities. These objects apparently must have some sort of force field around them that allows them to fly into the water at high speeds to move underwater at high speeds. And this says a lot about how advanced their technology is. They described it as completely silent with the lights on. And they saw these large stadium-like lights that were pointing down and uh, traveling across the skyline of the coral. 
I don't know if you call it an interest, but there seems to be a connection with water. Well, here we are at the Gulf of Mexico where many sightings have been seen throughout history. One notably was Ed Walters back in the 80s. He, along with many other people, witnessed lights in the sky. Uh, approximately a couple hundred people saw what he saw, but he actually was the guy who got the clearest photos of all. And here in the Gulf, there are just many, many sightings. And it's truly one of the best places to go if you ever want to see any UFOs. Multiple witnesses report seeing a large blue object fall out of the sky and into the ocean. Something is in the sky. The idea of UFOs and USOs might not be such a big deal across the planet, but when you live next to the largest body of water, the Pacific Ocean, and you've been in it and out of it and close to it for most of your life, UFOs and USOs are a regular conversation here in Hawaii. People have explained that they've seen things mysteriously rise and fall into the Pacific Ocean throughout the island chain. It's amazing the local connection between the USOs and UFOs. People are excited about it. Just recently, Honolulu had its own sighting of what looked to be a blue UFO entering the Pacific Ocean. Hey, come on, come down. Let's see what I see. They all said, yeah. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue object had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. Months before that, we received our Psyonix night vision camera, and we're so lucky enough to keep our eye on the Hamakua coast right out here one night and we noticed something glowing, something rather large. We pulled out the psionics and managed to get a good look at whatever this anomalous glowing object was. It put out some kind of fog, a hue of light that I've never seen before. Some people might say that they're squid boats. In all my life, I've never heard of a squid boat here along the Hamakua coast. We asked around, they don't do any of that kind of fishing with these lights on boats trying to attract squids. No, this was something different. Oh, the f***ing line in the water, whatever it is. She described it as being larger than a telephone pole and says she never heard it make any sound. We called 911 if I have like one cop or somebody for come out and um, come check them out. While officers were on scene, she says they spotted a second light. My husband will look up and he seen the white one coming. The white one was smaller, was coming in the same direction as the blue one. For years, we've had many different accounts of things coming out of our oceans and our waters at large, whether they be lakes, rivers, or otherwise. Possibly our own technology at the helm, as many of us have surmised, or there could be something more terrestrial at play. People often talk about extraterrestrials or other beings or races that are similar to us and just assume that they come from outer space. What if some of these species were actually coming within our cavernous Earth? I'm not suggesting necessarily that the entire Earth is hollow, the way that Admiral Byrd may have suggested, but it is possible that some groups from possibly the days of Atlantis, Lemuria, or other civilizations that met catastrophic ends actually did retreat into the Earth with their technology and have been developing it alongside possibly spiritual affect for years. One aspect of USOs that we almost never hear about are submarines that have perhaps captured a USO. Of course, this would be very difficult to do. Uh, submarines, as advanced as they are, do not have the ability to pull an underwater craft on board. Uh, certainly they've captured them on sonar. Certainly there are many submarine UFO, USO incidents in which USOs have been detected moving around submarines. 
but as far as actually capturing one, a USO crash retrieval, we don't have a lot of those. There was allegedly a USO that was captured during the Battle of Los Angeles in 1941. Uh, according to government documents, a USO crashed into the water off the Pacific coast outside of Los Angeles and was recovered by the US military. But submarines are pretty much primitive compared to the abilities of the USOs, which can basically swim circles around our most advanced ocean-going craft. Now, as far as UFOs go in the Gulf of Mexico, there are plenty of sightings to go over. I, I, there's so many I can't even count. It's been going on for centuries over there. I think it has to do with being in the Gulf itself, not in the, in the Atlantic or Pacific where it's much, much more open and deeper waters. But there's something special about the Gulf of Mexico. Actually, a couple of years ago, there was an incredible sighting. There was an offshore supply vessel in the Gulf and the captain claims he saw a UFO five times the size of his own vessel, which would make it approximately a quarter of a mile long. Just a few weeks ago, the Navy admitted for the first time that several UFO videos were real, meaning they show actual area phenomenon that so far the Pentagon cannot explain. That the referenced photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel. The Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force has included these incidents in their ongoing examinations. Now take a close look at this video. It's getting national attention. Some Navy pilots believe they spotted a UFO just off the coast of Jacksonville. The UFO encounter occurred in the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 80 miles from, well, south, southeast of New Orleans. And according to the OSV chief engineer who submitted the info of the sighting to the National UFO Reporting Center, he says that close to 7 p.m. on March 21st, just before dusk, Himself and four other crew members aboard the vessel saw a craft that appeared to be five times larger than their vessel. Um, the line of sight he had was about a quarter of a mile from their boat, but there was a rig behind the craft about a half a mile. He said he used that to help gauge the size of the craft. Um, the scene lasted about 40 seconds. The craft rose up out of the water about 40 feet, said he couldn't see any water dripping off of the UFO. And within a split second, he said as fast as it was turning off a light in a room, it was gone. And this isn't abnormal. Uh, according to many captains out in the Gulf or in the Pacific or Atlantic or any ocean, interviewing people on the Big Island throughout the state, it seems like there's a lot of mass sightings here on the island itself. People have told us strange accounts. What they see is something that whisks by. They say it's almost transparent, almost like a gossamer. You can basically see through it. It's strange. They say it, it almost seems like it came from the ocean itself. You see the light off the Oh yeah, it's hitting something. It's searching for something out there. Wow. Look, Look, it's holding, it's just stalled out there. Blake, do you see that? This huge light transmits a beam down to the ocean and it lights it up. Whatever this object was, we could tell that it was large. This wasn't no helicopter or drone. This was something much, much bigger. We see some kind of flashing indicators. Yes, it could be military, but whatever it was, it was large and just hovered there silently for just a moment and then traversed off out of view. Whatever's going on in our Pacific Ocean and along the coast of the island chain is amazing. USOs, they're no mystery out here. They're real. Our own submarines cannot travel officially, at least much in excess of 50 knots or so. That's the official story. However, I have learned from unofficial sources uh, from people within the military industrial complex that we do have a technology that allows us to move a little bit faster than that. 
We have degaussing technology. We have super cavitation technology, which basically degaussing is sort of hiding or mitigating the magnetic field that surrounds a ocean going craft. And submarines uh, are all about trying to remain hidden. And it's my understanding that we do have technology that has advanced in this area. Super cavitation is basically creating a field around a submarine that allows it to move more quickly in the water than it otherwise would. And I have been told from sources that are in a position to know that we have advanced with super cavitation technology uh, far greater than what is publicly revealed. And what's interesting about USOs, uh, transmedium extraterrestrial vehicles, is they absolutely have this technology. There are several accounts in which USOs are traveling under the water at not a couple of hundred miles per hour, uh, but just as quickly as they are seen moving in the sky, thousands of miles per hour. So it's clear that they have the ability to exert some kind of force field around them that pushes the water molecules away and allows them to move at super high speeds. Uh, we don't know how they do this. Uh, it probably does have something to do with the electromagnetism, anti-gravity technology, as this is how most UFOs are apparently powered. Certainly this is what contactees have been told. At any rate, this is the secret to transmedium vehicles, to USOs, is their very advanced understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum, gravitational waves, and their ability to sort of push water molecules out of the way so that they can move underwater at super high speeds. And we know this is something they can do because we have seen, got many reports of objects coming down out of the sky at very high speeds and diving into the water and not making much of a splash at all. Whereas any kind of craft we have that would move at that speed would be blown into a million bits. And there are many reports of objects coming out of the water. And there are a few scattered reports of objects being seen going into the water and out of the water during the same incident. So the point is, this is something the ETs have learned how to do and we apparently have not. As time goes on, we may have more information about USOs at large, but in the meantime, they remain somewhat of a nebulous subject. Now, with this enigma on our hands, we're going to continue to watch for UFOs as well as other objects that don't seem to be in their natural environment or don't fit some sort of status quo that we're familiar with in the way of science. These things are everywhere. And something about the water has a special attraction, maybe a need, maybe it's where they live. I mean, for all we know, with only knowing about 5% of our ocean, it's possible that's where they hide or even live. ACOT's president, Juan Carlos Ramon Lopez Diaz, claims to have visited the base known as Amupac via astral projection. And he says that Ciudad Madero suffered four direct landfalls in the 20th century, including Hurricane Inez in 1996, which killed 74 people. Lopez and his allies believe that the base was established sometime after a 1966 hurricane, which was Inez, that killed 74 people in Mexico alone. So he thinks the aliens built a structure under the water that can divert hurricanes. I mean, you have to admit, if that's true, then the aliens are helping us. Hey, anything's possible. They lost sight of the object after it passed over a nearby mountain. This morning, we asked Honolulu police if investigators figured out what fell in the water. A spokesperson told us they didn't have any information. 
Meanwhile, officials from the FAA said they received a report from police Tuesday night about a possible plane down in the area, but had no aircraft disappear off radars and no reports of overdue or missing aircraft. Some people almost say that it looks biological, some of these craft that are caught along the coast right behind me. What is it? It's very interesting. Could the military be doing secret testing hidden along the cliffs of the coast of the Hamakua? It's very easy to hide UFOs here. Basically, there's no people or homes along the vicinity for 30 miles. If you're gonna stretch this whole place, this would be a prime spot to do your UFO testing. Wow, that's like a UFO bar. Although Mariah's had a couple days to think about it, she says she's still baffled by what she saw. To this day, I don't know. If you guys can find out what it was, I'll let you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> Allison Blair, who what you news now. Although UFO sightings are plentiful in Long Island Sound and ultimately the Atlantic Ocean, USO sightings are scarce. There's the submarine base in Groton, Connecticut, and Montauk used to harbor sub pens as well. Plum Island is a biological testing facility, all of which may lure the interest of those creating this technology. Along the East Coast, we find USO sightings peppered amongst the surf, stories that toss in the waves as readily as we toss them under tongue, eager to comprehend what we've witnessed. USOs are seen all over the world. Uh, the East Coast does have some pretty significant accounts. I know there was a wave of USO sightings off the coast of North Carolina in the 1990s. A near very interesting USO account on the East Coast comes from a gentleman I interviewed personally by the name of Ray Sachs, who was an electrician's mate on the USS Klamagor. This is a Navy submarine which carried nuclear-tipped torpedoes. And according to Ray, in 1971, one evening, the Klamagor was traveling up the east coast on the surface at about 12 knots. He was on watch with another petty officer. The commander was also on the deck, as was the second in command, when a USO showed up. It came zooming up to the USS Klamagor at about 100 knots from the stern and began to pace the Klamagor right alongside it. This was a very bright, round, white light underwater. They couldn't tell quite how large, 50 feet, 100 feet, but it was very close to their submarine, far too close for it to be any conventional submarine or other object. It caused great concern. This did not appear on sonar. And one by one, the higher ranking officers came up on deck because they also wanted to take a look at this. And this USO paced the USS Klamagor for a good 15 minutes before darting off at about 85 knots in another direction. It's a very interesting USO case, which was apparently not recorded in the official log. According to Ray Sachs, the second in command, asked the commander, Sir, how would you like me to write this down in the log? And the commander told the second in command, officers who record this kind of incident in the log do not move up in rank. So this is what we see often in USO reports and in UFO reports, uh, particularly with the Navy. Uh, there is no paper trail. Many ev of these events are not physically recorded. So any estimates of how many USO accounts there actually are are probably vastly underestimated. I'm guessing there's a lot more than the small handful of cases that we know about. In a world where the possibilities are still unknown, we often look up to space and wonder, where is everybody? We sometimes have to look in our own backyard and wonder, what was the past like? Will we ever dig up any artifacts and find new technology that can lead us towards our brothers and sisters on other planets. Are they right next door at the moon? Are they sitting in Mars? Are they something we just don't understand? One day we'll get an answer and we'll find out that they're not too much different from what we are. 
But if we look up in the sky and wonder what that day would be like, I imagine it wouldn't look too much different than this. This is why we keep searching for UFOs and USOs. The truth is out there. As can be seen, UFOs and USOs are a real phenomena. The number of USO reports is growing very quickly. There's a lot of recent interest in extraterrestrial transmedium vehicles. Uh, and I'm glad to see this because it's time that USOs got the attention they deserved. I know that in the Santa Catalina Channel, activity is still ongoing. There are several recent cases dated as recent as 2021. So whatever's going on down there is still going on. I'm pretty sure the USOs are in our oceans, our lakes and rivers in fairly large numbers. And uh, it's time that people are aware of this. As with the UFO phenomenon at large, USOs continue to elude clear definition. As people come forward and evidence is accrued, Perhaps we may have some of the answers to our questions in the coming years. Until then, we remain inquisitive. I want to thank all of you for joining us here at Third Phase UFO Report. Stay tuned, there's lots more to come. Guys, keep your eyes to the skies. There's much to be seen. Let's just go down the rabbit hole here for a second. Let's just assume this is some sort of adversarial or foreign technology. Most of the more than 120 incidents over the past two decades are not from the U.S. military or other advanced U.S. government technology. right in front of me, it just disappears. Oh disappears, yeah, disappears, yeah. like gone. They clear he's referring to this giant object as a, as a tic-tac, because he said it was shaped like one.